Thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Write Project podcast and radio program. This is a show about writing and modern Newfoundland author culture. This program is produced and recorded at CHMR FM 93.5 FM in St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador and is aired on other great stations in the province and elsewhere in the country. It can also be heard online at www.chmr.ca. I'm your host, Matthew LeDrew, author of the Xander Drew series and founder at Engine Books. Let's see what we have today. Thank you for joining us for another special edition of the Write Project podcast. Not on Mondays this time because we have a special event going on this week. Thank you, CHMR, for allowing us to do more episodes. Uh, we're here with Nicole Smith of the Women's Work Festival, a wonderful, wonderful festival that's just a genius idea that I can't believe wasn't thought of before, where it features uh, women playwrights and writers workshopping their work and, and getting their unfinished plays in front of dramaturges and all of those things to finish their play, get feedback from the audience. Amazing idea. Love it on every level. Thank you, Nicole, for taking time out of your busy schedule this week to talk to us. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk about myself. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Talking about yourself is loads of fun. Absolutely. All right. So I'm on there. I went on the Women's Work um, Festival thing and I'm not seeing a play by you, which seems just wrong on every level. But it seems like you're doing more the coffee house stuff that's happening every day. Tell me about what you're doing with the festival. Yeah, so, um, yes, so this year I'm doing, I'm leading a couple of the coffee mornings, which are basically just a sort of check-in for artists or anyone else who wants to sort of join, and we have different themes every morning, and we just sort of have a conversation, because that's nice to do over coffee sometimes. Um, so I'm leading a couple of those. I also, um, this is actually my sixth year involved with the Women's Work Festival, uh, but my first as a board member, so I'm excited to play that role this time around. And I am not one of the main playwrights in the lineup this year, um, but I'm one of the uh, playwright skilled readers. I so see. I'm reading from a piece of one of my plays. Um, oh, yeah. So that's my involvement. Because it's more than just because I'm an author like that only when, when I think of a reading, I think of the author sitting there dryly reading their book work and doing a bad job at it like but there's got to be actors and I suppose you're one of the actors that's doing the reading no no I'm not I'm not oh. I'm not an actor you would not want me to act I don't, you're <laughs> acting like you're enjoying this interview right now so I, I think <laughs> no but definitely so for the main lineup of playwrights I think there are five this year in our lineup um, they do have actors read. They, they have a full workshop with a dramaturge for a day, and then they and then they get a reading of their of their play. So it's really great for development, and um, I think the festival supports playwrights in all kinds of amazing ways. Yeah. So this has been going on for six years, Say, like at least six. Years. It's Is actually been going on for sixteen years. Yeah, this is how the do 16th I not, year. <laughs> how have I not heard of this before? Okay, scale of one to 10, how toxic am I for not having heard of this before? <laughs> I will leave that to your own <laughs> judgment. I mean, the floor is a five. The floor, no one's not a five. No one in my demographic is not a five. Like, <laughs> I'm a one on the toxicity scale, liar. Horrible liar. Uh, wonderful. What are you looking forward to uh, from this year's Women's Work Festival? Like, I, Not that I want you to pick favorites, but I absolutely want you to pick a favorite. Yeah. What's, what are you looking forward to? Um, I mean, I feel like the lineup is great. I think with the main five playwrights, we have a great lineup of humans who are working on a bunch of different things that are really varied. Also, the opening acts of each night are also great. We have different artists from around town getting to do um, opening acts for those readings. Um, I think that the coffee mornings are a lot of fun because you just never know where the discussion's going to go. Um, I guess in short, I can't pick a favorite, but it's a great happening sort of week. There's a lot of events going on and um, yeah, it's always great to connect with people too, nice. especially in these times. Yes, absolutely. Especially in these times is right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
So on that note, uh, is this year all digital or is there actually some stuff happening in person? It is mostly digital, uh, which is too bad because only a few days after everything sort of gets lifted. Um, but in the planning, I mean, everything was so uncertain that we had to go forward. So it is digital. However, there's a performance walk. Um, I'm just going to double check, but I think that that's on Friday. Um, and that is in person. So you can sort of walk around you can sort of walk around town and catch a whole bunch of little performances. Nice. In various places. Yeah. The information is up on the Women's okay. Work Festival website as well. Yeah, 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 for sure. For sure. You know, uh, I have to not look that stuff up so I can be an idiot and have it explained to me. I'm, you know, that person in a movie, the ride along character that doesn't know anything and has to ask questions so the audience will learn. That's me. I get to be that idiot. I mean, that makes sense for a podcast, I think. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> That's wonderful. Uh, sounds fun. I have some questions to help people get to know Nicole Smith, the the okay. star, uh, better. If that is okay with you. Sure. All right. It's a heady one. I'm so sorry. Nicole, oh, no. um, so what is an early experience? The written word has a lot of power. OK, like and moving people with your words, whether it's a novel or a play or a TV show or whatever, it's, it's a big deal. You know, what was an early experience or an experience where you realized that? Like, what was that light bulb moment where you realized, oh, my God, language has power? I think so. The thing that I keep going back to when you say that, the thing that keeps pinging in my brain is that um, I learned to read really young. And I remember I just had this flash of a memory. We used to make those cootie catchers. I don't know. I'm from Ontario. I don't know if that's what you call them here, too. But it's like a fortune teller thing with paper. Oh, you, oh yeah. You know, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, I don't know. If there was a name for that here, I've never heard the term cootie catcher before. I, if you would ask me that. what's a cootie catcher, I probably would have said a condom. <laughs> no, it was not that in okay. this context. Okay. <laughs> anyway, it was one of those, like you fold it up. It's like an origami thing. thing yeah, and yeah. You fold it up and you pick a color and then your fortune is. Anyway, I remember being in kindergarten and um, someone had one and I remember this flock of kids running over to me saying, uh, ask Nicole, she can read. <laughs> so I feel like I felt powerful in that moment because it was like I could read what their fortunes were. <laughs> oh, oh, did you see? I would have absolutely made stuff up like, you know, back in the 17th century when there was one person in town that was literate. They absolutely were just like, oh, yeah, it says um, it says we got to kick Nicole out, you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I was that on top of it. And I don't think I could read that well. I mean, I was like four. Yeah. <laughs> but wow. anyway, okay. that's definitely an early experience. I remember thinking, oh, okay, there might be something to this knowing how to read thing. <laughs> All right. All right. That's fair. That's a fun one. I really like that. Cootie catcher. I have never heard that. I've got to Google <laughs> that right on the line. I've got to, like, that's, and I'm probably going to get put on a list for, oh my God. All right. Cootie catcher template. Oh, wow. That's actually what it's called. Is it really? That's it shocking. That's what it's shocking. Called. And it, but like when I got in cootie and then C, it came up with auto filled with template and it comes up with like foldable templates that you can download because nobody knows how to do them anymore. Apparently. Wow. Who knew? Wow. I, I definitely wouldn't have thought that was the actual name for it, but there you go. Yeah, apparently it is. But yeah, no, that's like, Cootie is such a weird thing because I swear this is off tangent and makes no sense whatsoever. It's not what we're talking about. This is how this show works. Someone says something and I've, I've ramble. But like, cootie is one of those words that if you told me, I would have said that wasn't said in real life. Like that feels like something that was said on Leave it to Beaver or those types of shows in place of another word they can't say. You know what I mean? Totally, totally. Like a bleep sort of word. Yeah, a like Joe Sam word. calling people a varmint. I'm like, yeah, that's because he can't say MFR. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. 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 I got gotcha. you. So, because you were four, this next question, because this is like a three part <laughs> question, get to know you kind oh, no. of thing. 
Uh, it yeah. probably isn't relevant, but the, the next part of the question was, was there a big, like, life experience that happened to you before that? Like, what's a, a formative Nicole experience that happened before that moment when you learned that language has power? Sure. Well, actually, so I was actually a sick kid. I was in hospital at Sick Kids for a lot of my childhood. I had a bunch of different heart problems. And so I feel that actually was very formative to learning how to read because <laughs> there was nothing else to do. So it was like, you know, played a lot of I Spy from the hospital bed and uh, and learned how to read. So, yeah, yeah I guess as, as someone that who had heart formative. surgery before the age of 30, I absolutely feel. Yeah. Like you did. You really? Probably. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. OK. Something we have in common. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Crazy. Um, um, I should have asked this beforehand. I'll skip real quick and then put it there. But uh, where are you? Where are you from, Nicole? Where were you born? I'm from uh, Cambridge, Ontario, Canada, and I live there half the year. And I live here in St. John's half the year. Oh, that's fun. So you're you kind of go back. Which wait, it's winter right now. Do you spend the winter in Newfoundland? I mean, sort of. I just got here. Actually, I just got back five or six days ago. Um, so I always come down for the Women's Work Festival, and then I had been since about uh, since about 2016. I'd been sort of going back and forth for various things, um, and then really the pandemic in 2020 is what solidified that there couldn't be as much travel. So um, since then, so this is my third year now spending half the year in either province, and I love that. I love that I feel at home in both places. Um, and a lot of my work is here, which I'm really grateful for. Wow, that's fun. That's fun. That's so interesting. Um, the going back and forth, especially and, and stuff like that. That's I had something I was going to say. And then I said, it. oh, and I said that I'm going to take that and put it at the beginning of this section. Just so you know, I won't like I. My, <laughs> yeah, okay. No, no. Yeah, no. Part of the charm, air quotes, charm of this show is me being like, I'll fix that in post and then not doing it um yeah charm that might be like the wrong it, it's word. Raw. yeah yeah exactly um <laughs> leaving in mistakes and rants is absolutely um <laughs> so post this episode where you learned that writing had power ever think of the time of your life since you were four which presumably <laughs> is at least 20 years <laughs> presumably <Yes. laughs> yeah so since then what is the big moment in uh, Nicole Smith's life? What's another, uh, it's a formative moment that has happened to you since the cootie catcher? A formative moment in terms of like language? Not necessarily, just anything. So it's it's trying to get a whole picture of the artist we're talking to. So it's like, mm -hmm. when's a big moment that you learn that language has power? What's something important that happened to you before? What's something important that happened to you after? Oh, okay. And then we leave you alone. I got to. <laughs> Okay. Hmm. I feel like from four to 32 is a lot of years. <laughs> so let me think for a minute. Something formative. Yeah, you, I'm you, sure. you took youth, very, you took young experience <laughs> real literally. Like some people are like, well, when I was 30, you know. Yeah. Okay. Something formative. Um, hmm. Let me think. <laughs> I feel like, oh God, I feel like so much happens every day I have a hard time thinking of things in terms of like you know that question people ask like where do you see yourself in five years yeah. I'm always like I hate that question so much because I can't even see myself like in a week so yeah. <laughs> um yeah I don't know I'm trying to think of that expansive time I'm sure many formative things have happened uh I lived in Toronto for a while. I met my partner of 10 years. I, um, I went to university. Um, I mean, honestly, coming to Newfoundland was pretty formative for me. It's, yeah. uh, I think this is a really special place and a place that I really, um, I really fell in love with the first time I came to, and it really also does go back to the Women's Work Festival and just everything they're creating there and what they promote and what they support. 
I, I do love Newfoundland. I, 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 I have been here my whole life. I've traveled a right. little bit, very, but very briefly. Like it, yeah, it, there is, there is something, but I'm biased. I'm from here. You know what I mean? Like, but yeah. And I know, uh, I know Newfoundlanders. I mean, I won't speak for you, but I know a lot of you have a complicated relationship to the place as anyone does when it's the place they are from. But uh, as an outsider coming in, it, there's, there's definitely a magic to it. There's something unique that doesn't exist even in other parts of the country, you know? For sure. And, and you're right. There is a complicated relationship. I, I recently, like within the last two years, uh, bought my first home and moved back to the place where I grew up and and was kind of nervous because I'm like, I remember it being very um, sometimes very closed minded kind of thing. Like I remember it being a bit like, oh, like 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 anti LGBTQ. anti this, Yeah, anti that. And I was very nervous coming back because I'm like, oh, man, I don't like like because like when someone acts like that, I can't not say something. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to be the person who picks a fight with every single person in my town <laughs> only to get back and realize the town's actually not like that. The thing is, it was the early 90s and the world was like that. So it's yeah. you know what I mean? like my memory yeah. of the town isn't accurate. My memory of the time is. But like that wasn't specific to this place. Yeah, no, that yeah. makes a lot of sense. I get that too, as someone who like, I never really thought I'd stay in my hometown, but, um, but I have sort of like back and forth, you know, and it's like, definitely when you go back, even after six or seven months, you notice a change. And when you've been away from home and you go back and forth, it's like, I don't know, sometimes just perspective, it yeah. changes perspective, your perspective on something. Very much so. Uh, I'm very scared because I'm back here now. And like, I'm a very, when I'm a writer, I'm very, oh, by the way, I'm a writer. Uh, I'm very yeah. structuralist minded. So like I follow this oh, thing okay. of like a character starts where they are, they go through this big journey, like after they have agency and then they come back to where they started having changed. Like, and it's mm -hmm. kind of compare and contrast. I've come back to where I live having changed and now I'm looking around like death is around every corner like oh no the story's like, almost <laughs> over you're like the book's done yes <laughs> now I'm, like, what? I'm like Abe Simpson just look around going death death yeah horrible. <laughs> um all right I have a this has already been fun but I have a series of questions that are supposed to be fun and not supposed to be heavy <laughs> ooh, what like your let's dig deep into your past style question so <laughs> The fact that we've already had fun with the serious questions bodes well for uh, for the fun ones. <laughs> Nicole Smith, uh, if you were stranded on a desert island for oh, the no. rest of time, <laughs> what are three books that you would want with you? Or or just written works? Like if you could take a play with you or a season of a TV show or whatever, as long as it was written. Okay, well, my favorite book of all time is Fall on Your Knees by Anne-Marie MacDonald. So I feel like I'd have to take that one. Okay. Um, it's also very thick and not that I promote burning books, but you know, if you're on a desert island, you might need to. <laughs> that's, that's, that's my answer. Oh. I always say I'm gonna bring Stephen okay. King's It because I need to make <laughs> yeah. firewood. There you go. So that one for sure. Uh, I feel like I need something that's very like um, that's very comforting to me and makes me feel like I'm not alone. So probably something by someone I know and love, like maybe um, one of Bernadine Stapleton's books, because, you know, I work with her a lot and she's a very dear friend. So I feel like I would need I need something like that. Uh, which she has two out right now, by the way, Girly Muckle yes. with um, Problematic Press and Love Life with Breakwater Books. She sure um, does. And, um, okay, and the third one, maybe like, maybe a journal so that I could, I could write. Okay. All right. I like it. Does that count? It does. I like you it. That's a cool okay. No, that's, it's a new answer. I like new answers. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, some people are, you started out very pragmatic, like, oh, I'm going to, I've got something to burn and then shifted. I'm like, 
like and i guess you took it too literally where, well or the way it's supposed to be but some i'm like okay you're going to be trapped the premise of the, the question is you're going to be trapped here forever and some people immediately try to get off the island like okay i would bring how to build a life raft for dummies um <laughs> right like, yeah <laughs> No, I accept my fate. <laughs> all right. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Nicole Smith, is there any book uh, on your to be read list or play or anything like that, any written work uh, that you want to read or see, but you find it intimidating? Any? What's the most intimidating thing on your to be read list? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I don't know what that I find anything <laughs> well i find things intimidating but i don't know that i find anything on my to be read list intimidating yeah. i um i don't know i read a lot and i read um i listen to a lot of books and i read a lot of digital books and i read a lot of paperback books so i always sort of have one thing on the go um and i find i mean one of each of those on the go and i find that sometimes maybe something that would be I don't know, longer or thicker or intent wise. Like I feel those three forms are actually very different and, yep. and they always lend to something. So I think that maybe eases the, the reading. I just love to read. Like I just, I. You're describing me, like we're the same person. <laughs> That's very, I'm very like that. Okay. All right. I feel I would be more intimidated if I was told like I, I don't know, I couldn't read again or something like that. You know what I mean? I, uh, yeah, I if, guess that's if, my answer. If you don't already have it, I have to tell you about a program that changed my life. So some books are available in ebook, but not on audiobook and stuff like that. There is a free program. There's a paid upgrade, but it's a free base program called Natural Reader. And you can oh put in an ebook or any text, like if you have to read something quickly, and it'll read it out to you with a, like, and you can choose the voice. The paid version has better voices, but honestly, it's fine. You can set the speed, all this stuff, and it just basically makes an e uh, an ebook for, or sorry, an audiobook for you. Oh, that is really cool! I'll definitely yeah. check that out. Yeah, the paid also, one you know. can actually even convert to MP3, which I'm like, pardon. Whoa, yeah. that's very handy. Um, I don't know if you know about Scribd as well but that's uh i feel like a lot of people are on audible but scribd is pretty cool because it's more um there's it's unlimited so you can yeah. listen to more than one book a month which for those of us who do it's uh great yeah uh it's wonderful because i share my audible with my wife and i have not gotten to choose what book i pay for for many months now <laughs> um yeah they're just there Nicole Smith, uh, what is the most unfortunate character name you have encountered in your while reading? Oh, the most unfortunate. That's a good question, too. These are these are good questions. All my questions are good. No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I just keep thinking about um, Hermione. I don't know that it's unfortunate, but when I read it, I think I was not alone in mispronouncing it for having never heard the name before when I was like 11. And I yeah. think I called her Hermie one for most of the time I read that series. Um, yeah. yeah, that's what flashes into my brain when I think about that. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is a pretty unfortunate character name, actually. Yep, yep. <laughs> uh, well, Nicole Smith, you read a lot. Uh, what is your favorite place to read? Hmm. Um, hmm. if I'm reading a, a book book, like a paperback or a, a hardcover book, I love to read in the tub my books. I'm not one who like uses bookmarks. I know. Are we not? I'm not describing you anymore. No. Tub? Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All my books are like, anyway, I write in my books. I fold over the pages. I love a well-loved book. And that includes bath water sometimes but um yeah I love the tub for a read and I, I love um if I'm listening to a book which I do usually when I can't read an actual book so like you know driving or um cooking something like that but I love to walk and listen to a book um yeah that's that's always a good spot to hear new words when you're moving 
I uh, I do something that drives some book people insane. Like I've been called a monster for doing this before. But uh, if I'm reading, so like this book, and there's a spot where I really want to remember where it is, I'll just take off that bit of the page and just rip it out. <laughs> Uh, and people lose their damn minds at me. Like, what do you mean you just ripped off the corner of the book? I'm like, well, now I've got it. I know. Page 59, 159, right there. I've got it. Oh, that's funny. I, I also laugh at, like, you know, I know some people who won't crack the spine of the book. You know, you're holding it, like, very... I actually Oh, that's the first thing I do. Read, I'll like... just, like, <laughs> work the spine. Yeah, yeah. I know. I anytime someone wants to lend me a book, I'm like, okay, well, what kind of reader are you though? Because <laughs> your book might not look the same when you get it back. Yep. One second. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I had one of our business partners uh, and 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 people that have worked with Engine along the way is uh, Amanda Labonte, a wonderful, wonderful person. And there was a, a tradition that Engine had for years when she came along and uh, then was like, no, we are not <laughs> doing this anymore. What's wrong with you? And we would take old unsellable copies of our books, like not ones that can be sold, but like ones that were damaged in shipping or stuff like that. And we would go uh, every anniversary down to Middle Cove Beach, me and my business partner and wife and editor in chief. And we would have a little mini book burning just to celebrate the fact that we don't do this as a society anymore. And we would only do our own. That would be how we do like our one year anniversary. And we put up a little video of us doing a book burning and of our own stuff. And people would lose their minds and we would think it was very funny. And and it was like people would share it out and we'd get a bunch of traction from it. But like, yeah, no, Amanda was like, no, never again. <laughs> oh, that's too good. Nicole Smith, what is your in your mind the best movie adaptation of a book? Ooh, that's a good one too. All right. So my favorite movie interpretation of a book. Yes. Um, I don't know if this is like an all time favorite, but I know I was recently speaking about this to um, to a friend of mine, Bill, a friend of mine, Bill. And we were talking about um, the movie Philomena is completely different than the book, which is by Martin Sixsmith, I think is his name. And uh, it's the true story. Um, I don't know if you know the movie or the book, but it's about a, a woman who uh, is sort of was forced to give up her child and he grew up in the convent. And anyway, I did a horrible job summarizing what that is, but it's a beautiful story. And Judy Dench plays Philomena in the movie version of it. And the film version is so much about her and her story, but the book is so much about him. And it's just really interesting the the difference between the two perspectives, and I think that uh, I think that the movie is better, which rarely happens in my opinion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I like it. I like it. Uh, Nicole Smith, if someone came up to you and said the last thing you wrote, like your last play or last whatever that you that you had a hand in writing, was there? favorite of all time and then asked you to recommend a book so your work is their favorite what are you recommending as a book if so, if your work's their favorite hmm. that's hard I find it hard to compare my work um, <clears throat> hmm. I feel like I don't know if I have an answer to this one I feel like I have ideas of like the type of work that I really love and admire but I find it hard to flip it the other way like I find it hard to think about um I I find it hard to compare my work to things that I admire versus using what I admire as inspiration, if that makes sense to you. Yes, I do. I do. Absolutely. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. 
Thank you so much, Nicole, for coming on the Right Project podcast. Uh, everyone, please check out the Women's Work Festival all this week, March 7th to the 11th. And have yourself a wonderful day, Nicole. Thank you so much, Matthew. And I hope our paths cross again. Me too. Okay, Absolutely. take care. You too. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.